Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second session on the SAP CAP for ABAP developers. Uh, so we will be focusing on folks who are new to SAP CAP. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we looked at uh, the demo of the application that we are going to build. And uh, in this session, uh, we will get started. Uh, so uh, the we looked at the three-tier architecture uh, that we are going to be building. And uh, let's also have a quick look at the architecture itself. Uh, so we will be developing the application uh, in the Business Application Studio IDE. Uh, this is the recommended IDE, but you are free to use a local version of the Visual Studio Code as well, or any other IDE. Uh, so once you develop your application uh, in the Business Application Studio or any other IDE, uh, you can go ahead and deploy the application to the SAP Cloud Foundry. Uh, so once you deploy the application to the SAP Cloud Foundry, uh, then uh, you can use the various services in SAP BTP to connect to publicly available services and also to your on-premise system. Uh, but for now, uh, we will be only focusing on developing the application locally and also be testing the application locally uh, within Business Application Studio. So uh, SAP Cloud Foundry is not in the picture at this moment. Uh, so just a quick recap of the three-tier architecture that we're going to be building. Uh, the UI is going to be built with the SAP Fury elements. Uh, the application logic is going to be CAP. And we also looked at the persistence layer uh, where we have uh, data coming from three different sources. Uh, we are going to get data from the Northwind data source, the SAP S4 HANA system, and also from the local system as well. Uh, so these are the steps involved in building the full application from end to end. Uh, we will start right from scratch. Uh, and what I have done is I have a GitHub repository of all the code. And uh, for each uh, step, uh, I have a branch. And that branch is the end result of step one. Uh, so step one, uh, we want to initialize the project. And uh, we also want to create a basic data model uh, for mapping the uh, so what you would do is uh, you would run this command uh, if you want to, uh, and this will give you the entire code. And if you check out uh, branch one, uh, and that will give you the end result of uh, this uh, first step. And uh, if we further subdivide the step one into smaller steps, uh, what we are planning to do is we are going to initialize the project using the wizard. We are going to create a data model and so on. Uh, so this is uh, the data. So, uh, this is the persistence layer, and we have three different data sources. Uh, but before we delve into step one, uh, let's identify the data sources itself. Uh, so this Northwind O Data Service, uh, this is coming from a publicly available O Data Service, and uh, this is uh, where we are getting the customer data from. So we are getting the customer data from this Northwind O Data Service. And for the sales orders, uh, we are going to use SAP S4 HANA, but not everybody has access to an SAP S4 HANA system, so we are going to use the Business Accelerator Hub. Uh, this is also publicly available, and this is the URL from where we are going to get the data from. Now, once everything is working, what you can do is uh, you can simply replace this URL to point to your SAP, business, uh, SAP S4 HANA system. Uh, but for now, we are going to get it from the Business Accelerator Hub, and uh, this is the URL from where we are going to get the sales order data. Now, let's also uh, quickly review the data source itself. Uh, so like I mentioned, we are going to get the customer data from the uh, Northwind uh, data service. And the Northwind data service, uh, the customer ID looks something like this. Uh, now, these, uh, now, the sales order itself, we are going to get from the SAP S4 HANA system, which is a completely different system, uh, no relationship uh, whatsoever. And because of that, uh, you notice that the customer ID and the sold to party, uh, which is uh, nothing but the customer, uh, they are completely different, uh, which is uh, understandable, right? Uh, because uh, for obvious reasons. Now, what we need is a, we need a mapping table uh, that would map uh, this customer ID uh, to this uh, sold to party. Uh, so this is uh, step one. That's what we're going to do. We are going to create a mapping table, and we are going to map uh, the customer ID here uh, with the customer ID in the SAP S4 HANA system. And this mapping table is going to reside uh, locally, so in our HANA database. 
Uh, so the mapping table itself is going to look something like this. Uh, you can see that it has the S4 customer ID. Uh, this is going to be this customer ID, the sold to party right here. And then uh, this is going to be the Northwind customer ID, which is uh, this. Uh, we don't need the customer name, but uh, just uh, uh, we have this customer name. I've added the customer name as well, but you don't really need to add the customer name. Okay, so let's get started. And we will be using the storyboard uh, to create this uh, data model. And uh, we will call this the uh, mapping customers. And then we will also expose it as an OData service uh, so that uh, we can uh, get the data out from an OData service. So that's uh, what we're going to do in step one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my uh, business application studio. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you already have access to a business application studio. Uh, otherwise, what you can do is uh, you can go ahead and sign up for a free trial account and you should have access to a business application studio. Now with the business application studio, what you need to do is uh, you need to create what is called the dev space. Uh, so there are some tutorials on how to create uh, the dev space for a business application studio. Uh, but uh, we will start from where you have uh, opened up the business application studio. Uh, so once you open up the business application studio, you will have uh, an option to either create a project or open a project. Uh, so in this uh, business application studio, I've used the productivity tools, the dev space. So when you create the dev space, uh, make sure you use the productivity tools, uh, the full stack productivity tools uh, dev space. Uh, so I've closed that wizard. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, if you type uh, press control shift and P, uh, this should open up the command palette. And in the command palette, I can say new project uh, so th that's what I'm trying, trying to do uh, so I'm going to create a new project uh, so uh, there is the new project from template uh, so we will go ahead and select the new project from template and for the new project from template the template that I want to choose uh, is the full stack uh, uh, pro project productivity tools uh, so go ahead and select uh, this full stack project uh, with the productivity toolkit uh, say start and uh, this is going to give you uh, the name of the project. Uh, so cap uh, beginner uh, or anything, uh, give any name you want. Uh, so in my case, I've given the name uh, from above to cap. Uh, so maybe you should give the same name uh, so that um, uh, the uh, so that my GitHub repository matches uh, your stuff, right? Uh, so I believe uh, this is the name of the project that I gave. So give the same name if you're going to be using my github repository otherwise you're free to give any name you want uh, and here for the description uh, you can give anything you want a uh, cap for beginners and then namespace i've given the namespace com.sap uh, but you can go ahead give anything you want again if you're going to be using my code then it makes sense to use the uh, com.sap now as far as namespace is concerned you don't have to go overboard uh, something easy is uh, better uh, so just don't uh, uh, yeah, d don't uh, give like a namespace that's uh, all the way this long. Uh, just keep it simple. Uh, even just one word is fine as well. And for service name, this is the OData service that we are going to create. Uh, call it sales. Uh, I mean, you can call it anything you want. Again, uh, but if you're going to use my code, uh, my GitHub uh, source code, then sales is better. Um, Again, um, and then you would say finish. Uh, in my case, I'm not going to finish because I've already created it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this. So I have already created, I, I've already created this project. Um, now, now once we have created this project, uh, you want to go to this uh, project explorer right here. Um, and you will click on this uh, storyboard uh, to open up the storyboard. Now, the storyboard is a visual way of uh, modeling a lot of other stuff. Uh, now, uh, granted, you won't have this mapping customers right here uh, because uh, yours is a new project. Uh, I am at the end of uh, step one. So if I look at my branch, uh, I'm already at the end. So th the green denotes I'm on branch one. So I'm at the end of step one. Uh, but uh, for you, you will be starting new. Uh, so this thing will be empty. So you will only have com.sap. Uh, you won't have the mapping customers. 
customers and uh, you will have a sales service because sales is the name of the service that you gave but you won't have the mapping customers right here but otherwise uh, your storyboard should look uh, just like this now what i would do is i would right, right click on this and we want to create a model entity uh, so add model data model entity so go ahead and click on that uh, so the model entity that we are going to create uh, so we are going to call it mapping customers uh, but we i already have it created uh, so i'm not going to recreate it uh, but i'll show you the steps uh, that uh, we need to do uh, so what i'll do is this is the one that i've already created and this is the one that i'm going to create right now uh, so i'll just give it uh, some other name i'll call it uh, mapping two uh, but you can give it as mapping customers and then if you click on this, uh, this is going to show you the details. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and delete this ID field. Uh, but we do need to uh, provide an ID key, uh, like a primary key. Uh, but uh, I'll show you how we can do this. Uh, and then uh, here, uh, I'm just going to verbatim copy this here. So S4 customer ID is what I need. And this is uh, going to be a string. And then you can hit the plus button. And then you want to hit the NW customer ID. Uh, and this is going to, ha so this is all we need, uh, but I'm also going to add the customer name from Northwind as well. Uh, you don't really need this, uh, but uh, just for, uh, uh, I'm just going to add this. Now, once we added this, uh, we haven't uh, provided a primary key yet uh, for this entity. Uh, and what we can do is uh, we can go into this aspects tab and uh, select this uh, CUID. Now, what uh, th doing this is automatically going to create this ID as your primary key. Uh, so if you come here, uh, this is uh, automatically created as a primary key for you. Uh, so this ID, oops, not this one, uh, but the ID key is automatically created as a primary key for you. Uh, so, uh, so we don't have to do anything. Um, and uh, so this is just uh, selecting the aspect uh, is going to do this uh, trick for us. Uh, so at this moment, what we have done is we have um, modeled a table uh, or an entity uh, in the CAP project. Now we need to have uh, some data that maps uh, the uh, customer ID from Northwind to S4 uh, system. Uh, so I have a CSV file and that is also part of the GitHub repository as well. Uh, so if I go back to my storyboard, again, we can do everything in a visual manner. Uh, you can click on open editor and then sample data. So what we're going to do is uh, going to add some sample data. Now you will be adding sample data to the mapping customers, but I have already added it. Uh, you can see that I have all the data here in the mapping customers. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I, since I created this new entity, I will go ahead and uh, add it here. Uh, so. It, couple of ways in which you can do, you can add some mock data, you can add, but we need some real data. Uh, so I have the CSV file, so I'm going to click on import. And if I go to my uh, downloads folder, I have this uh, CSV file. So this should be part of the GitHub repository. And what you can do is uh, you can go ahead and uh, add this, import this uh, CSV file. Uh, and you can see that now this uh, entity has um, all this uh, data. Okay, so now what we have done is we have modeled a mapping table. Uh, we have added some uh, some initial data. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and expose it as an OData service. Uh, so again, I go into my storyboard, and now you will see this uh, mapping customers here, uh, provided you named it as mapping customers. Uh, but uh, this one is going to be empty here for you. So what you can do is uh, right click here on this uh, service because um, now we are going to uh, add it as a uh, expose it as an OData service uh, so click add service entity and once you click add service entity uh, then you can select the entity that you just created uh, so in my case uh, this is going to be called mapping to but in your case uh, you can call it mapping customers and uh, then you can expose it as an OData service so let this uh, come okay so the editor has now opened up uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select uh, mapping to uh, so this is the entity that I just created. I don't need the uh, draft uh, editing, uh, so I, I don't need all of that stuff. Um, and I can go ahead and expose all the properties. Uh, so that's fine with me. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select a save, and this is uh, going to expose it as an uh, OData service. Uh, now, what I'm also going to do is uh, uh, once this is exposed, I'm going to go into the settings tab. 
and I'm going to mark it as read only uh, because I don't. This is not a transactional data. This is uh, once the mapping is done, the mapping remains unless we want to add a new customer. Uh, but we'll worry about that later. For now, uh, this is a read only table. Okay, so at this moment, uh, we have uh, modeled a table. Uh, we have exposed it as an OData service. Uh, so we are all good to go. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset uh, this, uh, uh, and uh, you can. So I'm so I'm going back to my. Um, my original uh, branch one. I'm going to run CDS uh, watch and uh, and then what you should do is uh, you should be able to see uh, in your O data service uh, there should be mapping customers and if you click on mapping customers uh, it should have the customer ID the mapping right uh, so this is uh, what the, the mapping that we have. Okay, so that's the end of uh, this session. Uh, hopefully you're able to follow it. Uh, I will see you all in the next session.